coming at you from Scratch and Wolf Studio. It's time again to rage across the internet. Your very favorite Werewolf the Apocalypse podcast. I'm your host, Porter. Sitting to my left, as always, Daniel Tyson. Hey, everybody. Across from me. In a, oh, not an empty chair. Who the fuck is... Is that Tommy Dixon? It's Tommy Dixon. here. It's Do You Believe in Miracles, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. <laughs> and hey, someone call Uncle Joey, because we got a full house over here. Holy shit. Coming in remotely, our old friend C. Grant Rose. Grant, how the hell are you doing, buddy? How you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you. Thanks for coming back, Grant and uh, Tom. Yep. Holy shit. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> no <laughs> <what>? problem. <laughs> I, I think it's because you said you were buying lunch this time. I said that, <clears throat> but I say a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. yeah I brought it. <laughs> <laughs> but just not mine. Mm. And Grant, how's the road treating you? <laughs> and you're still doing what I need to be doing to, so I can get settled down. Working on a bunch of projects, working on the Aja book for Savage Age and a bunch of my own stuff. So keep on keeping on. Well, and I'm sure once uh, that gets closer to ready, we're going to have a conversation or two about that on air as well. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, you know how we feel about Savage Age around here. You know, I'm always down to, to you know, sit in and talk about it. Uh, we'll definitely take you up on it. Today, though. Today, we're going back to school. Today, we are going back to school. Or is this the extracurricular activities? That sounds a little unseemly like, coming from you. Like the... Oh, man. <sighs> I'm not, I don't... I'm not even gonna... This is the school of rock. No. Is is it? Is, is band. It's band. <laughs> band, band class. class. There you go. Yeah, it's band. It's band class. Is that a real thing? It is a real thing. All right. There was a thing as band class. (laughs) The biggest blow off for an hour, yes. Hey. Werewolf School of Performing Arts. There you go. Hey, there you go. That kind of sounds That classified it up a bit. That that made it much classier. I was going to go all werewolf band camp camp edition, but, uh, and I think you win. I I like Werewolf School of Arts. So we got to decide if that's going to be Tyler or not. Uh, Well,. Couple we'll get, some shit together. We'll get there later. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> this, this fucking operation, man. <laughs> We're all together with like duct tape and willpower. I don't know what. <laughs> the nail or two here and there. <laughs> Which is weird because none of it's in the proper place. Nope. Of course not. But no, we are. We're going back and talk about the Irons today. The most versatile of auspices. It's going to be fantastic. Well, that's uh, that's an opinion. I don't know if I share it, but uh, certainly we can. Uh, that's, that's a conversation to be had. I think it's certainly an important auspice. It's, it's important, definitely. I try to remember that when you're creating your character, like, Gellards start off with the second most of the rage. They do. They so have the it. second most of the rage. <laughs> All right, don't make fun Because of they like to rage across the internet. <sighs> oh, we kind of stopped. We kind of <laughs> forgot the business part of it, didn't we? Actually, I kind of want to do that in the middle of the show now. Okay, that's fair. Well, spoiler alert. <laughs> they'll, never, they'll never know. Yeah. When's the middle? <laughs> mm. yeah, what's that mean? <laughs> so Galliards. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Galliards. Yeah, well I guess um obviously they give us moon. You know, they are the uh the song keepers, the keepers of the lore. They they keep the oral traditions alive. Tail spinners. Absolutely, moon dancers. Yes. Those are fancy words. Not not really. Tom said a third thing. <laughs> <laughs> They're not that fancy. They're pretty basic to understand at least. Sure. It doesn't mean they're not difficult to perform. So moon dancers, they're just dancing under the moonlight. Anyone else I, get that song just pop I, with their I, head? I, I see what you did. <laughs> <laughs> you believe this guy, Grant? <laughs> I mean, just better than dancing on someone's house, I suppose. True. I mean, he's, he's got a point. Yeah, yeah. I can't really can't really argue that. <laughs> yeah, that's not <laughs> argue there. Uh, I was going to say that you know, that there's a lot more ways to play the, the galliards than just simple tail spinners and moon dancers. As long as you don't fall into the pitfalls of that extra rage, you know, they're, they're really versatile as an auspice. I'd love to hear some examples from Grant. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear elaborate on that a little bit. So, my first character that I ever played, I played a Metis that was mute. That was his deformity. He cannot speak uh, at all. So, instead of being able to, you know, read poetry or sing, you know, he had to express uh, his, his duties in other ways. So the way I did it was dance? through glyphs. You know, he would he would draw glyphs, uh, not dance. That was overplayed. It's, it seems it seems to be too much of a consistent thing. So I had him draw glyphs uh, and write stories through glyphs. Now, when you were doing that, um, when you were playing the character, were you actually making the stories out of in glyphs? 
Absolutely. I had a copy of the civil record right next to me, so I could, you know, look at the dictionary, and then if I needed to make up a glyph, I would write it in English underneath, so my other players knew what the hell it actually meant, and then uh, we'll go from there. So that's how I did all my renown challenges and everything else like that. See, that's that's a good the bell right there. That's a cool idea. That's yeah. really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then having the silver right, silver record right next to you, it's must have been a lifesaver at times. <laughs> Silver Record is one of those essential lore books for Galliard. I mean, it has all of the, the pertinent stories and tales, um, and then you also have the glyphs. So not only would you need it in person as a player to reference it, but your character inside the game itself would also you know, benefit from having some version of it, either in their head or you know, have it written down if they're a glass walker or, or whatever. You know, I, I got to agree. Is the, the Silver Record is a book. I think the glyph section is amazing. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm a little lukewarm on the rest of it, and I, I suppose my position there is that there's not enough of it. Is it just because it's just it, It's just mean. a small book. Oh. And I think, you know, that should be a much larger book if it's supposed to encompass the history of the Gyro Nation. And I get that they couldn't put together, you know, like a War and Peace-sized fucking source book. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> say it should be like a bunch of encyclopedias. You know, like something... Like a whole... Yeah. Volume set. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a that lot was, of history. That was White Wolf dropping the ball. They could have released <laughs> volumes of the Silver Record the entire fucking time. Just festooned with different stories and lore of different corners of the Gyro Nation. Yeah, even if just make up stories or just like have... Well, they're all made up, Danny. Well, obviously they're all made up. <laughs> I'm just saying like you know, any of the you know the dev team there, maybe they have their own stories and they just start putting stuff in like that. Well, no, exactly, because you can get your story in the Silver Record. Oh, well, they could have got it off White Wolf too, the forums. They could have done that. I mean, they could have done a lot of things. I mean, I'm not alone. Mm-hmm. So right. I think that's <laughs> probably that's Porter's point here is they didn't do any of that. Right. You know, it was really cool to get that book. And again, there's some cool shit in there. And the glyph resource is amazing. I, I cannot stress that enough. I love the glyph resource part. Right. But it's like like five stories. It's like, oh, that's all. And not only that, but are they? I haven't read all of them. But are any of them that interesting? That's really up for debate. That's that's fair. That's I have the beholder shit. <laughs> fair. Is Craig or Rumpho in it? No. Well, that's sad. But, you know, it's interesting you brought that up. Because I was actually talking to a member of our Discord, and I don't remember who anymore, because I paid attention well. So, sorry for whoever it actually was. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I actually answered the question on the day, but I liked the question so much that I kept it. And I get to reword it, because, you know, it was in conversation and not an actual question. That's fair. But they were talking about uh, ways to influence and, and uh, I guess, get your players psyched to, to showcase different auspices. Okay. And, um... See, I want to give my players a taste of how their auspice could work. So looking for established stories that they could read a bit while um, he writes some of his own for the Sept. And, you know, obviously the Legends of the Garu stories came to mind. And, of course, the Legends of the Garu, the very first story on there, Craig Wolfo and the Death Bear. Well, it, it, it comes up a lot. So Because <laughs> it's the very first one as soon as you open the book. It's no, it's story. not. It's in uh, Storyteller 3. Oh, that... Yeah. My mistake. It's just I'm in that book a lot, and that's why I always bring it up. That's it's a really good story. It is. It's related to Gallard, so I'm, I'm fine. We're going to talk about it anyway. <laughs> is I think the thing with the Legends of the Garu, I, I have skipped a lot of them. Am I, am I alone on this, Grant? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you, man. I skip a, so many of them as well. You know, every now and then one will catch my eye and I'll read, but... Almost not necessary for your own canon. Well, it's not, and I think... I'm, I'm going to be the asshole in this one. I cop to it. I think a problem with them is, is I don't want to say they're not necessarily well written. It's that I don't care. You know, maybe the the Shadow Lord and the Shadow Lord story is one of the author's pet characters, and it's a very important character to him. And but he's not important to the world, so I don't care. Give me a story. If I'm, if I'm reading the Shadow Lord tribe book, give me a story about the Margrave. Oh yeah, there you go. Okay. If you're writing, you know, a Get a Fenner story, maybe that should be about Gogol Fangs first. Or, uh, you know, Geary Hunts the Hunter, or uh, how about, you know, Yellowstother? You know, someone important in the nation, right? So you're looking more like bring them towards meta characters. Yeah. That to make sense. To make those characters more important, and I think you'll care about them more. I mean, it wasn't too long ago we were talking about Old Man Miniskins and that narrative through the, the, the books of him spying on other, and we were excited, but because you like Old Man Miniskins. Right. Mm hmm. You might not like all the Pharaoh books, but, but you'll have a, a reason to read yeah, it. But, I, I want to read the adventures of Old Man Miniskins. Like, that is awesome. Exactly. So when you pull up the Sound Strider book, don't you want to hear about Vic Stryker or Mephi Faster Than Death and not, like, Ted? 
<laughs> Who's Ted? Exactly. <laughs> I don't care about Ted. What? Am I on my own here, Grant? Am I in the tall grass or what? Am I talking sense? No, I, I mean, I agree with you. I mean, the, the biggest thing that I don't like about them is the inconsistency. Wraith, uh, by comparison, they did their version of it much better because all of the, the three stories had to do with one signature character. So it was all this big ongoing story of this one guy and how he interacted with the world of Wraith. Werewolf, they just have these standalone stories out of nowhere that they're forgettable. Even if they're the best written story out there, you could just forget about it. Oh, I mean, again, if it doesn't mean anything to your own canon or to the meta plot at all, why would you care? Well, it's a thing. I mean, the the nation is full. I mean, that's what the history of the nation is. It's a series of stories of shit that happened to other people. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like Grant points out, the idea of making it the narrative of just one character if you, you you like, you get to like that character, so you, you give a shit what happens to him next. But when, you know, you pick up the Shadow Lord Tribe book and it's a story about, like, a Shadow Lord beat cop or something, you don't have me. I'm skipping that. Yeah, I'm not interested. I don't blame you. You know, and like... I, it is, I guess we're all unanimously assholes on this one. Right, well, I feel better now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've convinced us then. But, you know, I think... He, if you want to find a way to showcase, you know, yeah, obviously write your own stories of shit that's going on in the world, but maybe you can go and you can pick through some of those Legends of the Girl for the ones like Craig or Worm Phone the Death Bear. You can you can look to other people's games even. I mean, you know, you're you're on our Discord and you're looking for stories to tell. Oh, plenty of Certainly. people on our Discord have lots and lots of stories. I love hearing them too. And I'm not saying steal them. I mean, ask obviously or don't. They'll never know. But you should probably <laughs> ask. And I'm, I don't think anyone's going to have a problem with that. No. But again, I love hearing them. <laughs> That's my favorite. They People reach out all the time and I love hearing it. I don't always get to answer and, and be insightful as I can, but at least I get to hear it. So it's a lot of fun. So if you want to do that too, jump on our Discord. More business <laughs> later. But <laughs> Get that through our website, richcrossinternet.com. Yep. What happened? Uh, I don't know. It's crazy. Did you hear something? <laughs> no. Almost like an advertisement was in there. <laughs> what? Well, no, no, we don't got any commercials left. <laughs> no, we've, we've got to completely lose our minds for this. <laughs> different story. All that being <laughs> said, it is relevant to Galliard, though, because if you're playing a Galliard, you need to keep track of all these types of stories that are happening in your chronicle, so that whenever you're playing your character, you can maintain that consistency, so that the other players are also interested, as we just really eloquated. If there's no impact to you, you're not going to care, and you're going to skip it. So, as the Galliard, you need to make sure your stories have impact to the other players. No, you're absolutely right, and I think um, something to point out is is your your approach? I mean, you brought this up with uh, with the glyphs, which was super neat. But I mean, the the approach. There's so many different ways to do it, and obviously, we are all about ringing the bell here. You know, good enough is not good enough. Do your best, then find a way to do better. Mm -hmm. So, I, I think it's well established that we, we you're not getting away with a dice roll at my table. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you know, you are telling that story. May you want to write a poem? That's cool. You can read that poem. If you're a songwriter, hey, you can you can you can sing us a little ditty, cool. But you're not rolling dice and having anything work out for you. <laughs> no, maybe maybe just a couple reactions, but that's it. And even then, that's that's your dice, your own, as in Porter the storyteller, not any other character. So, so that actually creates an interesting dynamic. If you're not letting them roll dice for that. You're making them physically do the performance. Does their performance and or expression rating have anything to do at all with their uh, actual performance in game as a Galliard? Well, what I'll do is I will roll that score behind my screen, and I, okay. will, I will use that to gauge the audience's neutral reaction. Okay. You know, to, you it's know, it, it's a tough crowd or it's an easy crowd today, and that'll have to do with the rolls. It's about the effort and not about the job you're doing. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to jump in there, because, you know, our pack doesn't have a galliard so especially at moot time when it's story time and all that it's it's all about the effort put into telling the story i could be a shitty storyteller but at least i fucking did it and it, it's it's not going to be a punishable thing right you know if danny forgets and starts speaking uh you know swedish in the middle of it i don't know why that would happen he had a stroke i don't know but that happened too. He's not going to get penalized for it. Raise my hand and go, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, he thinks it's Swedish. He, he just, it's the Swedish chef. Oh. He just, he just imitates that. It's like, doop, doop, doop. 
Interpreter. He did well at our last. Yeah, he no, he did. Really he well. did. I but it, but it is. And I wrote that thing for like two weeks. And but see, that's the thing. You put the effort in. Yes. You know. So at that point, it's not about your actual performance. It's about the merit. It's about going that extra mile because that's important. And you know, I don't know if you've heard the story, Grant, but my my whole method, the the reasoning behind this was the time where I had a a player. You know, he was he was the galliard, and he was telling the story to Moot. <laughs> Danny, Danny knows the story, and and he was like, "Well, we found some worm creatures, and we fought them, and we won, I guess." <laughs> and his role guess. was like all tens, so that shit's in the silver record now. Oh wow! There's a story in the silver record that ends with "I guess," and I'm like, "Never again." <laughs> no, I mean, and it's not just the Galliard either. I mean, your stories all together. It's all about the effort you're putting in into the role playing part of it, the effort you're putting in as the character. R O L E over R O L L. Right. Nice. I like it. Thank you. So that's obviously one of the one of the pitfalls for having a gallery player is one that's not putting hundred percent into the performance aspect of the of the auspice. The other one that I've had the most issues with whenever I've story told a werewolf game is People trying to play a Galliard like it's a uh, all room, you know. I mean, it, it's yeah, it has a second mode for age, but it's not you know a diet out room to go around doing whatever it wants to do. Well, yeah, then I think that that w- runs itself into the. Um, I mean, your auspice roles and and how those are perceived. Because I mean, certainly, I don't care what your name is. I don't care what Moonsight you're brought under. You're a warrior. That's that's part of the deal already. Mm-hmm. So sure, but. You know, yeah, the Gallier doesn't have any business shouting out orders during battle or, or working strategy. I see, I, I, I disagree a little bit on that. I look at the, the Arun mostly as, you know, frontline warriors, berserkers, you know, that whole tip of the spear type warrior. And, you know, the, the Gallier is the one that's inspiring. So he's kind of like the Roman general behind the masses, you know, driving everyone forward and, and getting everyone motivated and rallying to, to continue fighting. Well, I mean, at that point, he'd be more like the little drummer boy. <laughs> you know, because, I mean, the Aaron is the field general. I mean, the battle strategy is part of their deal. Right. I mean, that's something we'll get into a lot on, on the day, mm-hmm. but on Fight Club <laughs> day. Yep. Mm-hmm. Fight class. What? No, it's Fight, fight Club. Fight Club. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, we stick with the school motif, and then there's Fight Club. <laughs> you know, it's dodgeball. I don't know what. Whatever. Ball? Gym class. Gym class. <laughs> Take a lap, bitch. <laughs> Shit. Um, but yeah, like I mean, I, I'm I'm with you with the, the inspiration, inspiration, even maybe a historical outlook, because I mean that's that's the thing. The Gallery is the keeper of history, right? You know, they're they're the ones who, and I'm using quotes here. Remember, <laughs> you know, that they hold the stories of of all those battles past, and you can learn from those mistakes, uh, obviously. But yeah, the little drummer guys. Yeah, I think I'm going to give all our yards in my game little drum sets now, and they can go into battle. <laughs> oh my god! I just i I have that fear, and I think that was one of the things that pushed me away from being the galliard when I was picking a character. Uh huh. Was I, I didn't want it being just like the guy who goes on the sideline and you know, rah team rah fight go fight. Just Cheerleader? everyone's yeah sure. That's what they're called. Yeah, you. <laughs> it's like they ha- again the second most rage and still a warrior. Yeah, I mean you're a garo. You're guess what? You're a warrior. You're a that's, combatant. That's yeah. That's Period. your job above all else. It's, it's step one. <laughs> Go die screaming in battle. <laughs> I mean, See? I have like the lowest rage being Ragabash. I use it constantly. Right. <laughs> But that's your character, too. But it's also the job. Mm-hmm. Still got to fight. And that's kind of the point. So, But I, I, can, I can hear that, you know, with a, with a base level of the game, be having that concern. Yes. Um, and again, we didn't know that much about it just yet. I was just going... Yeah, you're learning. Anyway. Yeah. It was just a couple sentences of each one. I'm like, yeah, that's definitely not for me. <laughs> well, and I think Galliard's a tough job. I, I agree it's a tough job. So I'm it's in s- my top three of the best auspices. Or most important. Yeah. That's what I mean. Okay. No, no, I'd agree with that. You know, I mean, the I would say the third is easily the hardest because there's the most moving parts. But if you're going to be a good galliard, that's... <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's, that's a lot of work, too. Agreed. I mean, I would argue, and, and you know, anyone disagrees, hey, hit, you know, um, that 
you should have a couple stories in the chamber just in case. At all times? Yeah. Just remembering. Or even something you can make up right off the top of your head. If, if you can do that, excellent. But I think there's a point to where there's a level of accuracy. You know, obviously you can tell a story or two about something that your pack has done. Mm-hmm. But a Galliard should have more than that in his repertoire. So here's a, maybe a big legend of the nation. Here's maybe... Um, Something that the pack from New England that you heard about at that sept the other week. Ooh. Or they could just say a story and say, I guess. They could do that. They, they, could, that's they could just idea, throw though. math rocks and go, ugh, I don't know, whatever. Math rocks? <laughs> and now it's on the silver record. What the hell's a math rock? Dice. Ah. Uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> you caught him off guard with that I one. I did. I did not see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> Crap. <laughs> I'm that's staying take, in. I'm taking shit for that. <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> Already. <laughs> Throx? Jesus. <laughs> I guess we won. I'm going to put a willpower point under that. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Like, no. Fucking tell the story. Agreed. Yeah, the, the story is the important part. Tell it. You know, and however, that storyteller does it. Yeah. Storyteller isn't the Gellert himself. Yeah, the Gellert himself. And that's the thing, is there are so many different ways to do that. I mean, we talked about, you know, the the, the Grand Park, the Glyphs. Uh, we, we talked about, you know, if, if poetry's your thing, about actually singing, holy shit, if you feel comfortable doing that, do it. And if your table, even Snickers, at you. Fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I hope they're friends with you, and maybe that's how you guys all get along, is you guys get a laugh once in a while, but like... For the ones who actually sang it, and we had a guy who did it. Yeah, in our Discord. Yeah, in our Discord. And that was awesome. Good on him. Absolutely awesome to do. It's that's ringing the bell right there. Yeah. You know, to and to have the balls to even tr- attempt it. That's, that's fucking admirable. Absolutely. You show your fucking respect. But, I mean, there's more than that. You know, I think it, it varies by... It, it can vary by tribe. I think it should vary by tribe. You look at something like the Get of Fenris, and you could have these... I heal, and you don't have to, mm-hmm. but you could see like culturally, like these these long kind of like Beowulf esque epic poem tale things where the Bonars, it's a bunch of dudes around a trash fire just bullshit. I can see that. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, right? I, I could absolutely see that. That'd be cool. And it's just yeah, just a bunch of guys bullshitting, and you don't realize that hey, maybe this trash fire over here, that's an actual Garu telling that story. <laughs> You know, um, hiding in plain sight. So. The difference between, say, you know, using our NPCs, here's some swing bird going, you know, listen, children, as I resound you with the tale of Critter Wormfo and the Death Bear. <laughs> and then you go to Central Park, right? Mm-hmm. And you got hand to mouth, the Galliard, going, hey, man, shit, I ever tell you one about Critter Wormfo and the Death Bear? This one's crazy. <laughs> Same story, it's all about the delivery. Different guy or different delivery. Okay. Or maybe a slightly different story even then. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, if you're it's going by culture. a little bit different, yeah. yeah you're going Details by. will change. Yep. Yep, exactly. And yep. maybe that's a good thing. You know, maybe that's a suggestion I give to Galliards out there. If you're gonna if you're gonna grab one of these stories, Craig, or you know, something like a Legends of the Garu, or something out of like Breathe Deep Breathe Deeply, or When We Rage one or two, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you want to paraphrase one of those stories to use as a Gallard tale, change it a little. Sure. Because shit gets lost in translation. You, you, you can't get ten people to play a game of telephone and get a fucking message to come across, right? <laughs> so, maybe there's some merit in twisting some details to make it your own, because that's how you heard it. It's all you know. Right. Not only that, but it's going to be culturally different how you heard it, depending on tribe, too. Right? You know, some... <laughs> look, look at Beowulf, right? <laughs> Each tribe thinks of their own, well, their the, own warrior, right? The Silver Fangs and the Get both mm-hmm. play them. Right, okay. I, I thought there was one more. Anyway. There, there might be, but this, those two do. Mm-hmm. And, and if those two, even if it's just the two, it's probably a different story between each of the two tribes. Well, absolutely. According to the Get, his name is Geta Fenris Slays Grendel. <laughs> <laughs> I have a sneaking suspicion the Silver Fangs don't tell it that way. No, of course not. <laughs> the Great Silver Fang, Geta Fenris Slays Grendel. <laughs> I don't see that happening at all. No, that's probably not the way they tell it. No. Nah. So, Probably has to do with caviar. Poor people are, though. <laughs> <laughs> Poor people. So all I'm getting so out of this is B warriors. What else you can really take into account when it comes to galliards? Like, one of their roles that seems to be ignored a lot of times is the fact that they're also the diplomats of the Guru Nation. You know, they're the ones that are, you know, the, the mediators between different parties during conflicts, especially other Farah or other, you know, groups. 
What about the Philodox? I was going to say, I thought that was kind of the Philodox job. Well, I mean, they, that is. That's their primary job. But the Galliards also fill in. You know, if you have a pack that doesn't have a Philodox, the Galliards going to be the one to step into that role. Well, you know, in, in that case, yeah. I'd, I'd, okay, yeah. Okay. Much like the Philodox will step in the role you know, at certain occasions when there's not a Galliard. Right. Sure. You know, or... Um, and I've noticed that as, as the books go on, they shy away from this. Is the Ahran is the de facto leader of a pack? Okay. Well, you know, once upon a time, it was, well, the Ahran is usually the leader. Done. And Not always, second, but... Second and third. Yep. And then later on, especially the later books of 20, it's like, that's nonsense. It's the Philodox. Oh. I'm trying to reel it back in. Yeah. It's like, ah, no. No, don't. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That said, that there's room for a peacetime and a wartime, or however your pack dynamic's going to go. It just, you know, it reminded me of the thing that oh, we're we're going we're to backpedal on that for no good reason. Unprovoked, fine. Uh, not sorry. No, I don't blame you. <laughs> Something else I just thought of that that uh, is pretty important in how you're playing your galliard is whether or not it's a waxing or a waning uh, gibbous moon, and whether or not that's going to be part of your character's optimism versus pessimism. Whenever they approach a subject or they approach a story, well, that's true. That I mean, the the difference in a character can make all the difference right. in how a story is told, and that can be a lot of fun too. Again, that that looks yeah. back to looking at a story from several angles and finding a a fun way to approach it. Hmm. You, know? you know, they say in the the book that uh, I can't remember which book it is. The one that goes through and talks about all the different auspices. The book of auspices, if, <laughs> maybe maybe that's the one. Uh, it's a safe bet. The, it's a safe bet. Wa- <laughs> if it's waxing, they're optimistic. But if it's waning, they're pessimistic. Based on you know which one of the moons they they were born under. So I didn't know that. Not- I didn't know that either. Yeah, I, I kind of appreciate how the Book of Auspices introduced that idea of the waxing or waning doing a, a slight deviation on the auspice. I'll have to look that up again because I'm curious on as far as the other auspices as well. Yeah, it's, you know, it's not necessarily mandatory, but I think it's a neat addition. Okay. Now, Tom, you were going to say something a bit ago. I was, what I was hearing was, basically, this is a storyteller and a fighter, and that was about it. Yeah. That's, that's all it is. There's no other little bits to the galliards. Oh, well, of course there's little. But, I mean, there's... This is to each one of them, but... I mean, see, the storyteller does it a bit of a disservice. I mean, you know, a galliard is responsible of learning the totality of the galliard nation's history. And being able to recite that and ensuring that it lives on, and then to teach it to other galliards is, is you know, a little baby galliard pops up. <laughs> yeah, it's keeping the traditions alive. Hmm. And like his Grant pointed out with his little drummer boy reference, you, can <laughs> 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 you know, they, they they can inspire. Talking about old victories, or or sometimes that story could be, you know, the the right story could be the the key to solving a conflict. You learn from the past mistakes kind of thing. Well, and especially when we consider we have a culture where death isn't the end. You know you die, you go back to Gaia, you were born. Your ancestor spirits, you can go talk to your ancestors, at least the ancestor spirits. Mm-hmm. So a grudge doesn't necessarily die with the guru that the grudge started with. <laughs> That's true. You know, we're talking multi-generational Hatfield McCoy bullshit here. and <laughs> That's awesome. You know, my great-great-grandfather and your great-great-grandfather squabbled over a fetish or a kinfolk, and it's been blood feud for both lines ever since. And it won't ever stop either. You know, exactly. Well, you look to the Galliard. But he's got to keep that tradition alive. Well, well, maybe that, you know, maybe except uh, down the way, closer to where this thing actually happened, that story's being told in a way different than it's being told at the set where the two families are fighting. Maybe hmm. the key to resolving that is in one of those stories. Hmm. Huh. Okay. It, Tom, you got the same face I do right now. It's, it's like, oh, wow. I don't like it. Yeah. That could be a chronicle right there. It could be. A couple chronicles, actually. You could make that last a while. Yeah, you really could mount that premise if you get it right. <laughs> right. <laughs> just set, just set a stool down. You're going to be here a while. Holy shit. See, I also like to see them being used as like social scouts, where they actually go in kind of independently and just canvas an area by talking to the local populace to figure out what's going on. You know, consolidate a lot of info and then bring it back to the pack. Be like, hey, this is what's going on. We need to do something about it. Send a buskin out on a street corner. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jazz hands. Grab your, grab your fucking drum kit. You're going on a, <laughs> you know, fifth, 
fifth in uh, Martell or whatever. <laughs> I collect some information. <laughs> yep, and I can you, see like, you know, if, like bonars. Yeah. Dibs on half of your take. <laughs> well, I mean, take that that one bonar gallier that you talked about earlier around the trash fire. You know, maybe that morning instead of you know doing whatever, he was outside the Seven Eleven begging, you know, for change and just randomly talking to people to figure out what's going on. You know, what's that <clears> new <throat> building they're building over there? Is that is that made by? Is it going to be built by Pintex or, or Indron or what's going on? Hmm. That's exactly That's the way to do it, right? So you don't have a ragabash, you can use a galliard that way. Yep. Very, and very versatile some, auspice. He's he's making that point without making that point. I don't appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I, was say, I appreciate it, but like, I, I guess because you're calling him out of the bullshit, I, he's just proving you wrong. I, I wanted more of a fight, but he's <laughs> he's just sneaking his points in there and... And they're good points, and God damn it. It's <laughs> <laughs> well done. No, I mean, you know, it, I mean, I, we make our jokes, but it is great to have someone who, who knows the game and appreciates the game and respects the game and knows what they're talking about to converse with. Because even if you don't agree, there, there's, a, there's an angle there, or there's a perspective that you can, you know, maybe it changes your line of thinking, maybe it convinces you. You know, it, it's, it's nice to have. Oh, yeah. So, you know, we, I appreciate the shit out of it, Grant. Thank you. Yeah, he's definitely someone who knows what they're talking about. Yeah, because if you don't, then it's you have no business part playing that role. I guess you you can think you know you're free to think a thing. Just maybe open a book and figure it out before you. Oh, that's why we said it's <laughs> you know, it's up there in Nothing. the most important <laughs> ones. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> okay. Nothing. Nope. No, I heard it. I heard it. I was trying not to. Uh, I could. I couldn't. <laughs> I just sit back for that one. Yeah, we can't go any farther. This, I mean, we probably could. We could t- it's our show, man. We can do whatever we want. Anyway. Um, now, for me, I've always, you know, it's it's obviously not the only way to do it. We've mentioned as much. I've always appreciated the version, the the, the, the picture of the Galliard, that, that person with the six string, your Jamie Moon song, for example. Uh, she's my favorite Galliard of our game. You know, it's slung that, that acoustic, you know, around the, around, you know, around the back and just... You know, mm-hmm. I, I, it's it's always been my favorite version. No, like I said, that's that's my favorite Galliard of our game mm-hmm. is how she tells her stories, and it's always you know with the songs she creates and writes and moots, and, and they're even the one where she didn't have a story the one time because instead she had a broken guitar because the rage had gotten the best of her. <laughs> <laughs> that was such an awesome story. It's like, oh man. We don't get to hear a Jamie Moon song today. Moon song song. <laughs> Moon song song? Moon song song. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was something I do um, in our games with, with Jamie in particular, is that because our games are set in the 90s, mm-hmm. I will take songs that came out in the future, <laughs> and sometimes she wrote that. <laughs> You're allowed. I am allowed. Can, yeah. That's honestly, why not? why not? It was a cool idea when it happened. You know, I, I think in particular is the one... The one I stole from live, uh, where, where everyone misunderstood the meaning of. Yes, I'm trying to remember the name of the song. Uh, the name of the song was "The River." There we go, "River." I mean, it was kind of kind of a joke, because like you know, you can look at music. You know, and again, I say that music is a huge inspiration. Should be a huge source of inspiration, at least as for me for Werewolf. You know, you listen to a song and you can kind of this isn't what it's about, but if you can look at it this way, and this is what it's about, right? Sure. And that song, you can you twist it and it's like, no, that's about that whole song's about Gaia. <laughs> it's about someone's love for Gaia, but in the the, the song, you know, it, it's presented as a woman. You know, she came without. She did this. She did that. Yeah. So you have Jamie Moon song sing that song. <laughs> you know, like in an open mic night, and people all of a sudden think she's yeah. You know, it was the the the, the groupie. You know, the, the the guy that had the huge crush on her that hears the song and he goes, "Oh, she's a lesbian." <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Like, hey, now she doesn't. Like, yeah. They don't understand. Right. It's like, no, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's fine, bud. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the same time, now she, that's one less person she has to worry about, but hey. <laughs> Just shock Jamie Boone song over Swimming Bird. Oh, as far as story wise? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Galliard wise? I, I appreciate the way she tells the stories. I like the way she said, but I just like the way Swimming Bird delivers. Well. Well, thank you. Because this is. <laughs> That's fair. Like ultimately, I'm playing that. So. <laughs> yeah, well, you're playing both, but right. You're but thirty-seven thousand. Swing Bird's my favorite for sure. Well, Swing Bird, he's that more traditional. You know, the storm clouds are gathering. You know, 
That's it's easier. It's, it's a lot easier as a storyteller. The way you present it with the voice, it's right? Like that's it's more that memorable. Booming yep. and, but it's an, it's an also traditional around the campfire story, which again is, is so much easier. I can't I can't write a fucking song. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I guess no. Tom's right. I mean, I get why he's your favorite. That's fine. I'm a traditionalist. You know, I I, I, I I wrote one at one point. You guys haven't met her yet in the games. Uh, it was Ronnie Lupo. You've mentioned a couple times, yeah, at least it, to us. And, and her thing was she was this brilliant poet. She was written to be this brilliant. Like, Swing Bird would be excited for what she had to say. Okay. And how I was we- weaving her into the narrative is her and her pack had actually gone to flux and managed to go back in time a month. Holy shit. That sounds a bad idea already, but... Right, but we don't got to get into the story. Mm-hmm. But you, But... So now I have to tell this story through a poem. As a poem, <laughs> which I can't write in the first place. But not only does it have to be good, it's got to be really good. Yep. And, and, I'm, and now I've got to, like, I'm sitting there for two weeks with a thesaurus trying to find the most obscure version of a word <laughs> because that's the version she would use because half the people aren't going to be able to understand what the fuck she's talking about. <laughs> she's just I so just over their head. doing a haiku. <laughs> See, that'd be too easy. I couldn't do it. <laughs> it's a poem still. <laughs> Might want to do a limerick. There you go. Once was a guy yeah, from Nantucket. I mean, <laughs> you could also just write a story and have it be, you know, non-rhyming and be done with it that way. I think, well, it is the most common version of, of Galliers is to have them be those performers. I think the fact that you have so much flexibility in the auspice, you know, players should really take that into account to try to flesh out a character that they're going to be comfortable playing and realize that they don't necessarily have to do the traditional role. No, you're, I mean, you're absolutely right there. And I think that's that's why we, I, or I, I want to bring up so many different types and so many different options because you can be just as effective as a Galliard with your poetry and prose as you are with the, hey, let me tell you about the time. You well, know? Yeah, again, and there's goes back to... There's room for Stairway to Heaven and the Midnight Society. Ah, nice. <laughs> can see it. No stairway. <laughs> no. <laughs> Can't play stairway. <laughs> it's not allowed. Right. Unwritten rule, man. But you get what I'm saying. You know, no, there's, 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 yes, room, there's room for both. There's not There's not even a best way to do it. No. Well, I mean, your approach there's is... There's a best way for you. And there's a best right. way for, for Grant. And there's a best way for Storyteller X. Well, even then, and even that's divided by character. Agreed. Because let's face it, if the next time we hit a mood in game, a we, we start a, we start a you know we start a you know the stories and Swing Bird gets up there and, and reads you a poem, that's the other or starts God. singing to you. I'm questioning, right? Yep. You no, might just run. <laughs> it's not Swimming Bird. Yeah, something's wrong. And the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. Like what the fuck <laughs> just happened? That man has lost his mind. Thou shall not suffer. People suffer ten my sickness. Yep. He's, he had a Get stroke. Him. Get him. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if a different Galliard showed up to tell some kind of story, and then that's all of a sudden what they did, like, well, how do we know any better? That's how they tell their story. Yeah. And it's about finding the right version for, for both you and the character. Okay. I'm curious, like, uh, how other storytellers portray their Galliards. Especially if a pack, their pack doesn't have one. Or hell, even if people's packs, how their galliards portray stories. I agree. That's something I'd love to hear about. Yeah. Even the uh, Discord. Hey, write it in. Yeah, right? Or, you know, you can come to our Discord. Right. Come on the which, Discord. If you're not a member, you should become a member. Because it's it's a really great community. There's lots of discussion, debate. You know, and it's all fun and games. You I know, have, it, all the it's, time. We've never had, like, a legit fight break out. Because, <laughs> you know... <laughs> You, you might get a heated debate every now and then, but everyone shakes hands and hugs it out at the end because it's all about the love for the game. Agreed. But, you know, you get there through our website, which is, uh, what, what's that again, uh, Danny? Rageacrosstheinternet.com. Dot com. Dot com. <sighs> Guys suck. <laughs> also, if we got another one on a grant, too. <laughs> um, you know, and while you're there, you can check out our store. We, uh, we always are on the lookout. We're taking suggestions for products, always. Always. Um, in fact, uh, one of our guys recently convinced me to put the high tops up. Oh, you did it. I haven't yet, but they're, they're coming. Oh, boy. There, there's uh, That vendor, is they got something going on. 
So those products from that vendor are on hold for a little bit. Okay. But that, that's an internal thing on their end, whatever. Still, they're, they're we're designed doing it. and ready. Yep. Same with the jacket. Yeah, the jacket I'm excited it's, it's for. It's the same vendor is the problem. They also do the hooded blanket. So those are on oh, hold briefly. Damn it. Yeah, I, I want the jacket. I know. Um, but, you know, we got products like that. You know, someone requested a tank top. That's happening. <laughs> The RA tank top is, is happening. You know, uh, I, the iPhone cases. Those are those cool. are coming. You know, if uh, you're a wine per, let us know because we we have the the stemless wine glasses we can do. Oh, cool! Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. but that's I don't cool. know if we have a lot of winos in the Discord or mm-hmm. in the audience. You can drink that's scotch a, out of it. It's not a judgment thing. I'm not. <laughs> Who says it has to be wine? You can drink scotch out. I, of I it. suppose that's true. Everyone loves scotch, and you can. I mean, really, it's it's. It's a glass. You can put whatever you want in it. It's true. You can put pennies in there. I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's got our logo on it, though. Um, but there's, you know, there's some cool stuff there. Yep. You know, and um, if you hit the Discord first, you'll get the discount code to the store. First time use. That's true. You know, we, we we like to have the stuff. I mean, you know, no one's getting rich. We try to keep the prices affordable, and it's free shipping for everybody. So hooray! You know. Also, better than the Discord. Better than the store. Patreon. Well, better if you for like us. hearing us talk. That's well, that's the whole <laughs> fucking statement. See, Grant's laughing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, obviously, if you uh, you know, uh, the store is a great way to support us and to get some cool shit. But also, yes, the Patreon. You know, we actually we just had our hangout night last night. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good time. That was that was a pretty funny night. That was pretty fun. Yep. Questionable, shitty movies. Everyone's laughing, having a good time. Yeah, just enjoying each other's company, and um, you know that's that's our base tier. Like any <laughs> donation at all gets you in on that level, which right. is cool. That's that's the monthly hangout. That's my favorite part. You know, we have our post mortems oh, where we, tier two. yeah, where we dive into the entirety, every story that the Danny and Tom here have played under me as a storyteller. You know, we we dissect it. We have that that retrospective look and go over. Uh, the process of writing it, what the story was, thoughts and feelings about everything. It's uh, it's useful information. Yeah, I, c- I can't wait to unveil some of the stuff coming up. And oh, it's coming. Yeah. We're a couple months out. <clears throat> yeah. Nah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, um, our top tier is currently the NPC of the Month Club. where you, Currently. Currently, where you get a write-up directly from my Bible, my character Bible. So it's it's one that I made, and it's it's the definitive version because you know I've had multiple versions over the years. I always tweak something if I reuse a character, you know, reuse a setting, and uh, so you get the definitive version. It's a fresh write up every month, and that becomes your character. To do with as you please. It's not yeah, it's not the stats. Stats whatever you want them to be. Yeah, that's the least important part. I agree. Yeah, because it's the fully fleshed out character and who that character is as a person, as a Garu, as a warrior. As a friend, yeah. as a pack mate, as an auspice. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you get their history, you get who they are, their essence of the person, you know, the and then you get your you know, your role playing your various role playing notes, the errata, stuff like that, appearance and all those things. Yeah. But uh again, people people enjoy these things, so yeah. there you go. <laughs> yeah. People seem to love them. We're we haven't got any negative feedback, we've only gotten the positive. Yeah. So if you have negative feedback, let us know. I mean we won't like it, but we'll hear it. <laughs> Well, you know, but definitely the the feedback. We we love to hear the feedback. You can't get better if all you have is, if all you hear is the good stuff. That's true. So, but that that's our Patreon, and that's, a, that's again that is a great way to to show the love and a uh, great way for us to give back. Yeah, that's what we want. We want to be able to give back. You know, it's our way of saying thank you for you saying thank you for us doing. Just it, it, it's, it's a whole. It, it's like a cul-de-sac. It's crazy, but it's a good thing. <laughs> that said, if it's a um, circle of thank yous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that said, if you uh, if you don't if you don't have the money, or you don't want to spend any money. We respect that too. Uh, how can they how can they contribute and help uh, help us be five stars? Five stars. Five Apple stars. Podcasts. Do the ratings. Five stars. Tell your friends. You can write in. I love popcorn. I don't care. Just as long as we get the five stars. <laughs> it, it, it's all about that algorithm. Yeah, yep. that's the weird part. I mean, we would love to hear. What you think about the show, and we we do want to hear that yeah, too. We want to hear it. <laughs> it means a lot to us. It helps us get better at what we're doing. And if, but if that's what you really want to say, I guess go for it. I mean, but, if you hate us, give us the one star. Let us know why. We'd love to get better. Right? Sure. Yeah. 
That's that's. that's I mean, the you know, one of the ones a bit extreme. We served it at a one star show. I don't think so. <laughs> We're just saying. You're not going to be an wherever, asshole about wherever it. Wherever you feel we land on it, just make sure you do it. But the problem is the five stars is what's keeping us circulating. I know. So that's why we're asking for the fives. And, you know, if you feel we're a one, I think maybe now's the time for self-reflection and reevaluation. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps a time for quiet. <laughs> Jeez, Tom. <laughs> yeah, what are you saying that here. shit for? That's messed up. Tom's not here. <laughs> oh, apparently Only not. Zool. Only <laughs> Karen. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Business, business I, over? Yeah, I think business is over. I told you we'd sneak it somewhere in the middle-ish. I have no idea what the timestamp <laughs> is. But we're, we're okay for now. <laughs> See, you can fast-forward it if it's in the beginning. Right. You can turn it off early if it's at the end. Yeah, you don't know when Now it's you're coming. fucked. <laughs> now you have to listen. Now it's in the middle. <laughs> you have to listen. Like, fuck, they're doing the business. Where do they stop? I don't know. Just get so, through it. So back, back to the galliards. Yes, back to the galliards. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you, know, you. The whole point of the episode. <laughs> nah. Hey, we got a show, so, man. We got to keep the lights on. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so besides tail singers, uh, which is a pretty common uh, moot position for galliers to fill, uh, what also what other positions do you normally have yours fill? Like, I see that they're pretty common as master of the how and a moot, and, you know, some other ones. What, how do you normally run up there, quarter? Oh, definitely master of the how. Um, that was. I mean, I was I was thinking that as you know before you were saying it's like well obviously I think that's kind of it's almost obvious. Mm-hmm. Um, well, same with tail singer though. Well, but that's tailor made for them. Okay, true. You know, you're not you're not going to have your your biggest meanest hour out as the tail singer. Mm. No, that gets a little killer croc. So I was <laughs> robbing a bank and Batman showed up, so I threw a rock at him. You know, imagine Whiplash doing it. No, yeah, exactly. See. <laughs> 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 So, I mean, obviously, that's a, a tailor-made Galliard role. But, yeah, Master of the Howl, definitely. Um, I would say Keeper of the Land, but fucking, any, that's, like, such a nothing job. Anyone can do that. <laughs> like, that's that's the that's the set position that's basically a punishment. Oh, I didn't even think about it that way. And I think most people don't, because it's, like, it's a set position. Yeah, the one where you got to clean up after everybody. <laughs> Congratulations, you're the maid. <laughs> oh, or janitor. Still not good. <laughs> like, oh, that's a, okay. <laughs> You're the janitor of a warrior race. Congratulations. Oh, go go clean up the restroom. Yeah, right? Gross. <laughs> Scratch, I took a dump in the barn. Go find it. <laughs> sure, it won't be that difficult. What were we talking about? <laughs> Set positions. No, I know. Um, <laughs> no, obviously anyone could be keeper of the land. Uh, but I mean... I don't want to say that's it, but really, those are those are the positions I generally put Galliards in. I mean, everyone everyone runs Bond Detail. Everyone is technically a Guardian Pack if you're not a, if you're at an Elder. So right. <laughs> so those are the ones specifically for Galliards. Then. Yeah, I mean, like Master the Challenge. That's your Ahran. If you don't have an Ahran, okay, give it to the Galliard. But what the hell kind of Cairn are you running that doesn't have an Ahran? <laughs> That's a like that's some dire straight shit. That's yeah. that's an easily taken Cairn, probably. Right, and I don't mean money for nothing. I mean like things are bad, not the band. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? Oh, so are you in a band? <laughs> I've actually had uh, good success with uh, Galliards being a uh, caller of the wild. Uh, I had oh, one Jesus. where the Thayrouge was killed against Nexus Crawler, and his pack mate Galliard basically had to take over his duties in the set. And uh, he really himself. No, I completely forgot about Call of the Wild. That's a good... All right. <laughs> a good one. I... That's my bad. He's got you again. It's fine. <laughs> Damn. Grants carry this episode, man. <laughs> so uh, I, I think that's a uh, fill-in spot for the galliards of uh, each one of the offices now that I've discussed. Just just so, you know, anybody's keeping track. <laughs> Just want to throw that out there, okay? All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know it's always uh, it's always good to uh, to have you here, hanging out with us. It's a shame, <laughs> shame this is the last one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh, we just just got disconnected from Grant. I don't know what happened here. <laughs> also, oddly enough, uh, Daniel Tyson has decided to go join a commune. Oh, so. <laughs> So good luck with the operation and your future in service to the Lord. 
Oh, wow. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Sass mouth me. <laughs> uh, I think that's really dependent, though, on uh, the tribe, too. Like, uh, Uptina Gallier, they work really, really great as a caller of the wild. But, you know, as you said, maybe if someone from the get would have a, a more difficult time taking over those duties. I think that's, that's entirely possible. I mean, I think, uh, obviously, it all depends on the character. I mean, it's easy to talk in, in terms of a tribe, but it's not a uniform thing. Right. And again, it, it becomes style. You know, the, the personal style of the character. It, it's... I definitely get what you're saying. Of course, you know, you, you bring up the, the Octana, and I, I love the idea of an Octana Galliard that I, I, I've never actually thought about it before. Uh, uh, which is weird. Point well, which is weird, because Ron... Ron Day Tripper is a, a Galliard. I was going to say, it's Octana, Ron. But, I mean, he's such a uniquely him character. Okay. Uh, when, I, when I think of the Octana in general, I think of characters like um, like Dark Horse. Mm-hmm. Like that creepy motherfucker that might do something to you if you fall asleep before he does. And not <laughs> as a joke. No, not as a joke. And not, not at all. And like, yeah, like I'm not making a joke here, but like, am I going to wake up with all my stuff intact? Or... <laughs> This, I can see that. Where's my arm? Right, you know, just <laughs> and not even if they, I'm not even saying that's a valid fear, but the attendant are creepy and they're a little scary, and I love that about them. <laughs> and you know, I love the idea of of playing that up, like adding that to it. Like everything's a fucking ghost story. I can see it. Like the idea of that Galliard who makes Jack and Jill into Saw. Oh Jesus. The two opposite ends, man. Right. You like, it's, it's, it's still a- the Jack and Jill story. He just somehow tells it in a way that makes it sound like Saw. <laughs> oh, man. I- I'm curious as to how he would do that. I don't know, but it's amazing to think about, right? Right. <laughs> and now I really want to hear it. <laughs> Little Diddy about Jack and Diane. <laughs> sure. This is not one the best that episode. Does one of them no longer had a hand? Yeah. I, don't know. I-, I definitely have the Galliards playing more of a Therus role for that tribe because all the Therus in that tribe, they're too busy paint tending. You know, they don't have the time necessary to really fill into those other auxiliary responsibilities of the Therus. So who's going to cover down? Well, the Galliards will. There you go. I like that take. I mean, I point out you don't necessarily have to be a Thurge to be a bane tender, but it certainly helps. <laughs> it helps <laughs> a lot, probably. Yeah, you don't have to, but... Look, I mean, I mean, technically, anyone can learn Mother's Touch, right? True. Um, I mean, you don't have to go to culinary school to be a chef, but uh, the best chefs have been to culinary school. Exactly. There, there you go. That's exactly it. Solid point. <laughs> As I look over the time. <laughs> what? Didn't you go to culinary school? I did. There you go. <laughs> did you really? I did. Oh, shit. <laughs> For a minute. <laughs> That's what I mean. I did not know that Tom had been to culinary school before I made that comment, so... That's fine, and that's why it was funny. No, no, it's fine. I mean, I'm not a chef, so. <laughs> Honestly, it would have been weird if, if, if you did know that first, because we didn't know that. <laughs> well, you didn't. Obviously, I did. <laughs> He's literally going to be joining that commune soon. Mm-hmm. Forcefully. <laughs> Danny's going to be a nun. Nope. I don't, no, it's not. I'd say an altar boy more than a nun. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's the attention you want in life, there, Danny. Nah, no, no, no. We're good. Yeah, keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've discussed on how the Gallard part is important, but how about in the pack themselves, not just as the as a whole in the Garo Nation? How about an important part of the pack? Well, uh, definitely morale. You know. Yeah. Uh, you you want? I mean, you've you've got your your human mixtape right there. <laughs> you're you're going to be responsible for the get psyched mixed. Get psyched. Fuck what? Get psyched mix. You yeah, get, you you're responsible it. for the get psyched mix. You said it right. Done a good it right. Did I? Yeah. I felt like Rich Evans right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Rich Evans is here. I, oh my god! I wish. <laughs> I mean, you have to take into consideration the fact that the the world of werewolf is so depressing, you know, and they're under such stress and pressure that Harano is right around the corner. You know, with, without a Galliard in your pack, there's a pretty good chance that, you know, somebody's going to fall into, into Harano at some point in time over the course of doing what they do. You know, it's almost necessary to prevent that. Well, I'd say Harano prevention is probably uh, it's pretty, pretty important. That's <laughs> <laughs> up there. So but, keep up morale. Keep up good stories and 
You know, if you get knocked down, you get it back up again. <laughs> You're never gonna uh, keep me down. That's right. Oh man, uh, <laughs> I wasn't. I was trying not to. I was trying not to. And you did it anyway. <laughs> Oops, he did it again. Oh no. Oh. And <laughs> yeah, we have not done enough of those this episode. You think you would have been start to finish fucking song references? <laughs> no, we missed the ball on that one. If we did, and Daniel fixed it in editing. I'm doubtful now. Or it's. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know. It's Quaintance for you, buddy. Yeah, figures. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, and I, yeah, I mean, I'm to go know. into it, when, when it comes to your Galliard in the pack, it's going to depend on how you build them. Because you can build them, you know, any, any way you want. Like I said, they're, they're, you can go a physical route, a, a social route, or a mental route. And then based on their strengths, it's going to dictate really what they're doing in the pack. So, for example, if they're social based, and yeah, they're definitely going to be morale builders and stuff like that. But they could also be the scouts, like we talked about for the pack. If they're physical based, you know, they're, they're a backup fighter to, to the hour room in addition to keeping up morale. If they're the mental based, maybe they're helping out with research and figuring things out with uh, the spirit world or the therouge or, you know, helping the field dogs out with figuring out different, you know, parameters is going on with it, with other situations. They could say, hey, you know, Here's the precedence for this situation because this happened back in the day, so that this is the way that I would do it if I was in your position. And the field dogs are like, "Oh yeah, that's cool. That makes a good point." No, and I mean it's you know I mean it's like you said there. I mean a lot of that is it is based on who that character is. You know, so there is it's it's almost the sky's the limit. But you're right. You know, being able to use that knowledge of the because let's face it, I mean we talk about song and dance, but these are historians. You know, so being able to, to pull up that story from the past, you know, and, and using that to to help guide a battle or to help solve a problem, it's, it's absolutely a thing. Um, the song keepers, I like that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they're, they're the ones responsible for keeping those stories alive. Without them, the guy would lose their history. And that's... So would the strongest Galliard be a silent strider? Because he gets to go everywhere. Well, again, that depends on who the guy is. That's true. You know how how you want to build them the the, the way you take him. Um, you know I, I talk uh, you you Grant you brought up the the sheer darkness of the world of darkness and and all that in inside of all of that murky black darkness of <laughs> Good. I, I believe in a thing called love, but oh my God. I had to and I'm I actually am sorry about that with everybody, <laughs> but <laughs> but no um I think it's for me. You know, my, I, I think it's important to show not only the, the depths of that darkness, but also the light by contrast. You know, in in, in my world of darkness, there there are equally bright brights as well. And I mean, it's it's little things like like stepping into the Umbra in a Glen, for example. That connection with Gaia, the the open road, or you know, there are there are things. And and I, I try to point those out through the games, through those darkness is is glimmers of hope, is things to remind you of why you're fighting what you're what you're fighting for. And I think in that the Galliard is in a unique position that they can help point those things out and show some of that light to go, yeah, this is it's this. It's it's this it's this day to day. It it's it's here's that story that reminds us what we're fighting for, that things can be good and what we're doing maybe when this is all over will help lead to good again. Showing why that history matters. Absolutely that, too. Well, I can see it. Like, you know, if we go back to that example of the Glen. Maybe there's a Garu who hasn't experienced that yet. You know, a young cub, maybe, something like that. Sure. But then you have a Galliard who can explain that and put it into brighter you know, brighter words and bigger picture. Help him understand what he's about to get into. Or even remind someone of what uh, they thought they lost or that it's missing. You know, I mean, we talk about the, going back to staving off Hirano. You know, surely a Galliard through song or story or fun limerick could <laughs> could evoke that emotion again to rally, to inspire hope, to to remind that there 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 has to be sunlight. It can't rain all the time, right? Right. You you can't have shadows without light. Hmm. You're right. I like it like that. <laughs> you did it. He did do he it. He did it. <laughs> I try holding he said it. he wouldn't. I try holding that back so That was hard. super deadpan. I loved it. <laughs> you almost got away with it. I almost, I was just, I was going to pretend like it didn't even happen. I couldn't hold it. 
That was in my head. <laughs> Good. No, I want to go back still. Um, I'm saying, a Galliard Silent Strider, wouldn't they be the most knowledgeable of the nation's everything? Well, I, you know, I suppose theoretically. I mean, you, I mean, you have the idea of because ideally the Silent Strider is all over the place, so he's hearing stories from all over the nation. I mean, that doesn't necessarily translate to talent. And I mean, as a character, not as a player, but certainly the most diverse grouping of stories. And actually, if you, if you want to go further than that, they're, I, w- I would say, a Hondi friendly. Okay. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so who's to say they can't come back from a journey with tales of the Ahani? You know, it's maybe, maybe an Ajaba legend. <laughs> or uh, something about the Simba or the Makole. You know, they went down to Africa, they blessed the rains, they came back home, and look at all the shit they learned. <laughs> so you'd say he's an all star? <laughs> definitely. <laughs> he definitely could be. Oh my god. I should have saw that coming. I, I should have saw it coming. As soon as he said a Hyundai, I should have. Oh my god. I uh, should talk about. <laughs> I mean, in aspect, you could also say a Ronin would be just as good, too. Well, I think... Well, before you go with Ronin, I was thinking not only could they be, you know, like, diverse in that aspect, but they could be the ones who are also spreading that knowledge way easier than any other of the tribes, as far as... Uh, Striders. Striders, thank you. Braveheart. <laughs> right. As far as the Silent Striders. No, I mean, I, th- I think there's there's merit in that. You know, again, with uh, they, they're generally one of the more accepted tribes everywhere. I mean, as, as far as that takes you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's, let's not go crazy here. No, I know what you're saying. But, you know, yeah, I think they have the potential to, to learn the most from a variety of sources and even past that. And then teach the most. Absolutely. You know, I could, I could definitely see, you know, the archetype of that traveling strider, that, that, that roving storyteller who's just he's dropping knowledge left and right. Moving on the next day. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Grant? Actually, I think that would really tie well into the difficulty for Galliards to actually get renowned. You'd almost have to really branch out outside of your tribe to start, you know, learning enough things and being involved in enough things to get uh, the renown necessary to really up, up your rank. You got to think what they focus on: glory and wisdom, and those two things are, are probably the most difficult of the renown to get up to a high level. So to really get to like rank three or four, it's going to take a very flexible uh, galliard to really get to those types of, you know, those peaks. So a silent strider in that context would be a perfect fit for that. You know, they're, they're going around, they're meeting new people, they're meeting new packs, they're learning new stories, you know, so they're increasing their wisdom. And then they're also spreading the glory, you know, and they kind of get uh, an auxiliary benefit to that. Well, you know, and in thinking about it, to, to kind of add to that, too, I think something, a, a cool aspect that, that just hit me is we talk about, you know, the, the oral tradition of Garrett society, and even of, of the shifters, how it, it's all stories in there. You know, we, we talk about telephone and how there are different versions of a story depending on. Well, you know, I think a strider in particular is, is maybe uniquely suited because of the traveling nature. To hear multiple versions of a story. And then be able to distinguish. Suss out the shit from the shit, maybe. There you go. Hmm. Well, I've heard this story five different ways, and three ways that this guy hit first. <laughs> so he can, he's the one be able to decipher the middle ground of each of those. And what, you know, there's like three sides to every story, right? Your side, my side, and what actually happened. Right. That's what I'm saying. You know, they could hear those different versions and maybe suss out what the truth most likely was based on the general consensus of five tribes, different versions of the same fucking thing. So you're saying they'd be the ones to find out that Han shot first, huh? Well, I think anyone with a brain knows that, but, um, <laughs> I like it <laughs> like that. That's just like, yeah, we already did that one. Did that, that way. You can't uh, stop. You, you just, you're failing. Stop. No, <laughs> don't put a hat on it. <laughs> Tyson, you hack. <laughs> yeah. Man. That's why I'm not the Galliard or the storyteller. Don't call it a comeback. You've been here for days. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you might as well have been. So, okay. So you so, also have to take into account that, like, the Galliards are also the ones that most commonly do certain rites, like the rites of renown, the rites of death, things like that. Those are actually, you know, most of the time a Galliard is that. So that, that traveling silent strider is going to have 
you know, a real advantage in doing stuff like that. You know, and I think a lot of those are, um, they can be overlooked. I mean, I I think when people think of rights, obviously fetish creation, I think, is first and foremost in people's minds. Rights of cleansing. That's that's the simple shit. You know, you think about bigger shit like cairn, you know, creating the cairns, and and you think of punishment rights, maybe. But there there are a lot of, there are rights that that involve (laughs) galyarding. It's a word. Yeah. But, you know, more more social, more social rights, even, that that are, are... Typically, that I think are well suited to a galliard. I think that's a really good point. But I think that's something that some groups, maybe a lot of groups, I don't know, I'm, I'm not everywhere, can overlook. I'm sure it gets overlooked. I mean, you, you look at it where it could just happen, and they're forgetting it shouldn't just happen. It's actually a right, and there's actual process to it. And you should do it, because we ring the bell here and quit half-assing. What's wrong with you? There you go. So, so something else I just thought of uh, a character idea. Um, you could actually have a silent strider that washed their legs, but and they were galliard, of course. So we're talking about galliards, but you could have them be the uh, gatekeeper of a sept, you know, guarding the moon bridges, and have that be their method of travel by being the gatekeeper and just talking to people as they come and go. So, are you looking to go as several gatekeepers under the same person, so they're never I mean, in the same spot at one time? No, I'm just saying, that, you know. They, you have the one gatekeeper, obviously, but he can't travel anymore because he, he ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dan. So, <laughs> you know, the way that uh, he deals with that is just stays in one step and helping out. He gets his stories that way. Yeah, but if he's a strider... I'm not going to trust a guy with no legs to guard my step. <laughs> I, mean, th- I mean, there's that. But, um... I mean, strider, there's, but there's the haunted issue. That's, that, that's what I was trying yeah, to Yeah, which, br- which Danny was trying to bring up. Yeah. yeah. Although, for me, I, if I were... I'd just get, like, a get a Fenris to carry me around like Master Blaster. <laughs> <laughs> that could work, too. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Right? That'd be hilarious. <laughs> Lieutenant Dan... I heard you. That was, that was solid. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> hey, you you were saying something about Ronan, Tom. You you said the word Ronan, and then we got pulled back to Striderland. Oh, I was just saying, what about Ronan? Wouldn't that essentially be the same? I mean, they don't have a tribe that they're going to obviously be under, so they're essentially a Strider, too, but not, because they don't have a tribe. You know, I... But that's if they're going to be accepted. And that, that, becomes that becomes the problem. The, yeah. You know, as is, is, I'm sure it's possible that the stories that a Ronin would hear could be very interesting, or, or they're the tales they could tell. The problem is... Who would trust them? Right. Who would believe them? Like the weirdo who gave me a straw that day. <laughs> you have panned? We, we are, we're not letting that man in the door. No. Nope. No. Because we'd have been in the paper the next day. <laughs> 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 so but yeah like I, I think it'd be interesting source and you know i'm, I'm gonna poke off that because you just made me think about it i would be very very interested for a, from an intellectual standpoint to hear of a black spiral galliard oh now like i'm you know i'm not an advocate of playing spirals you know no. I, I i no thank you you know i'm just like i'm not a fan of this upcoming spiral tribe book which isn't for moral reasons it's just for the second chapter of every book of the worm has been called the Black Spiral Tribe book, so technically they're on their fourth edition. We don't need that book. <laughs> I, you know, it's worm, worm one, two, three, and twenty. They all have, yeah. No, I know. The entire like second chapter of each book is dedicated to the Black Spiral Dancers. It is usually called the de facto Black Spiral Tribe book in those books. So, Give me third edition regular Tribe books instead, please. Yeah, or worm twenty time. or whatever. You know what I mean? Anyway. Um, but I would be very interested to hear blacks like the, of the Black Spiral Galliard. What kind of stories resonate through that side of things? Like I'm, I'm, I'm curious now. Well, I mean, maybe some vomit, maybe <laughs> maybe some some bile, some blood, and some more blood, some <laughs> and some more blood. Yeah, maybe even more vomit. A little blood in the tracks. <laughs> Did that again? Well, add some snot in there. I mean, if you want blood, you got it. Blood. I'm with you, though. That would be some interesting stories. Just right? to hear their side of things. Yeah. You know, like, a, even with their heroes. I mean, we all know about Jai Jack. I'm already not impressed. Like, we've heard enough of Jai Jack that I don't need to hear about Jai Jack. Fine. It's like, oh, you want to hear about the greatness of Upper? No, I don't. Tell me about someone else. And, and you can, like, look, you can look through books like uh, Words of the Apocalypse, right? And there's, uh, I think it's Hudson the Night. 
and how he's this big legend among the spirals. Like, the spiral cubs take turns playing hunts in the night. Like, who gets to be him today? So, like, I'd love to hear some of those stories. I'm, I'm curious what the hell they talk about when they're around the balefire pit singing, slinging stories. That's if they have the same... I mean, they, they're still Garu. They still have auspices. Yeah, I was going to say, they're still... Those roles are still fulfilled. Hmm. Just... Yeah, like, Hunts, Hunts at Night's a Ragabash. You know, uh, Isaac is uh, Al Rune. I didn't know either. Okay, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. And then there's what's his nuts, the guy in the Iron Lung, the evil dead man whose name keeps escaping me that showed up in Worm Twenty. I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Lyric is hearing this right now. I'm going, you idiot! His name is this. I talk about him twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll we'll know who it is oh, by the time this airs. Yeah, we'll know about it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Good job, Lyric. No, he was a he was a spiral who um, was like Shyshak's not all that. I'm gonna go nail her. And so like he goes over and tries to mount her, and she beats the shit out of him so hard he gets brain dead. <laughs> I remember that story. Yeah, that's ah, awesome. And then like so they go to put him down. Like he's in an iron lung or whatever. They go to put him down, and like the place he's in goes all evil dead. Oh, like you know, like the the deer head on the wall starts talking. It's like I wouldn't do that if I were you. Whoa. Yeah. So like he's some crazy psychic. Spiral now because of severe brain damage because he tried to nail Shai Shai. Wow. That's, that's, that's kind of awesome. That's the Cliffs notes, but yeah. That's kind of awesome. I don't want to hear that story. Right? <laughs> Ask Lyric, he'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> Lyric, DM me. Yeah. But yeah, but you know, so like, there's got to be stories like that. There's got to be a Kreger Wormful in the Death Bear version from the Spirals. Right. And it might be disgusting and sleazy as hell. I don't know what. But I mean, from an intellectual standpoint. You know, as a storyteller, I'm legitimately curious what the hell kind of stories that they have over there. I, I think there's a level of value in that in terms of fleshing things out. And then, of course, there's a level of curiosity. You know? Curiosity gets me, too. Yeah. Um, Kills the cat, though, so watch out. Uh, we're not best at. Oh, so it's okay. Yeah. So uh, I think a perfect example of that would be like uh, Monk Ball, who was the one uh, Black Spiral dancer that he was trying to find ways to break the chains of the worm. The gurus say, you know, they have their own stories of him, but, you know, the Black Spiral Dancers, they, they're more than likely portray him as this, you know, this martyred hero of, hey, he was trying to free the worm, and then, you know, the, the guy in Guru prevented us from, from averting this by by killing them all. That's a good point. You know, while, while we're on it, I'd love to hear their take on Guru, Rick. You know, yeah. who, who um, you know, for those of you who don't, because I'm getting some looks. Yeah. Um, Please <laughs> is is arguably because there's a couple different versions. Yeah, sure. through the editions, is either the only the, the greatest of the White Howlers who was never corrupted, or was the oh. first captured who never was corrupted. Okay, or was the first one to be corrupted, or was the last one to be corrupted? There's literally there's four a different lot versions. Of different versions. Wow. Okay. He's mentioned in a lot of books. Maybe he's the one in Airbus right now. Not according to. White Howlers or Book of the Worm 20? Okay. He's in Wraithville <laughs> in, in one of the scenarios. I, I think it's in White Howlers. That he's in Wraithville converting the ghosts of Black Spirals oh my God. into White Howlers, but boo get out. <laughs> oh. so I, I don't... Okay. You're going to take the, take this with like 40% accuracy. <laughs> I'm going to be clear on that. <laughs> so, ultimately unnecessary is what you're saying. You say boo, get out, and I kind of tune out. Got it. <laughs> it's 40%. <laughs> so, not even half. Yeah, I am not afraid to admit what I am wrong. I'm not afraid to admit I don't quite know what I'm talking about. You'll hear it. That's fine. Well, what about practical, practical applications of this? I thought you were going to say something different. Don't. I want to know. Don't worry about me. Okay. Talking about crackling taters or something, man. I don't know. Mm, Gross. <laughs> I mean, a uh, practical application. I mean, there's there's two ways. You know, obviously the storyteller, the the player perspective. I think is as a storyteller uh, portraying a yalyard. I have learned, especially with you clowns, that you you really got to think on your feet. Talking about me and Tom. Yeah. Okay. I remember a specific it's a good thing you're good at that. <laughs> that we did where I had planned to do a reading of the Prophecy of the Phoenix. Also, pro tip, don't do a reading of the Prophecy of the Phoenix. It's like it's long and it's dry as shit and it's very exact. <laughs> but I had planned to do it because... Because you had nothing else? Well, because it was easy. Oh, that's fair. Like, I got to do is copy this out of the book and read it out loud. Oh. Ooh. 
but <laughs> it, it's long and it's super dry. But I was going to, you know, that was what I had planned. And, and part of that, I, I think you guys remember this story. Yes, now I do. Because part of it was, you know, the, the, the preamble. Swingbird's like, oh, what do you want to hear today, children? You know, like chef. And people were yelling <laughs> shit out and he's going to tell this story. And, and one of you two. It was Tom. Yeah, I know who it was. <laughs> <laughs> We've actually mentioned it before, but it's, yeah. it's okay. It's worth mentioning. Tell us again. how you met... Uh, Character Z. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell, tell us how you met Lennox. Fuck. <sighs> and, like, and you didn't have that. No, offhand. I had no idea. No, because you didn't write that out. You I had just invented that character three <laughs> stories ago. <laughs> he was brand fucking new. <laughs> You're welcome. And, and like, not only was he brand new, but he was an elder... So he was woven in the history of the elders of that sept. Tell us the origin story, you son of a bitch. And the character had just died. So it was super appropriate uh, to tell the story. Like, I couldn't as a story killer go, no, I don't want to. <laughs> no, this is actually the perfect time to reminisce and tell yeah, this story. Say, it, was, it was the only time you were able to pull that story off. Well, you could have got it other times, but there was it was a super appropriate time. Okay, there you go. That's better. So. You're welcome. Yeah. And so I had to cobble <laughs> that shit together right there on the fly. Here's the best part. The story they came up with, like, it ended up being like a cool joke, but like Tom and I, uh, I mean, okay, I'll say it for myself, I don't know about you, but would never have guessed that you just did that right off the cosplay like that. Oh, yeah. I thought he had that prepped. Yeah. So did I. No, I liked it. And I mean, it wasn't really a joke. I mean, it was a funny story. Yes. But it was, I thought it was in line with Lennox. What I mean by a funny joke, it ends with a Fianna, a Get, and a, I don't remember who the other one. So to go. Okay, all in a bar. (laughs) Oh, yeah, what is this, a fucking joke? Yeah, walk into a bar. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, okay. Yep, I'm remembering. It was a while ago, but still. Yeah, that was the uh, the German brothel in World War II, wasn't it? Yep. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> That's how we met your grandpa. I, <laughs> At a brothel in Berlin in World War II. <laughs> I can't wait till that comes up on uh, postmortems. Because that's, that's getting brought up. Of course it is. It's not written down anywhere, so <laughs> awesome. I don't even think it's in our notes. That's it's in my answer. notes. How oh, is it okay? Good. Maybe not enough specifics, but we can at least talk about it. But notes is another great thing to bring up. Especially yeah, being exactly. Yeah, is is uh. In, in fact, I, I think I'll let you take this, Grant, because hey, you're here. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, so if you're looking at practical applications when it comes to players playing a Galliard. Uh, the first thing from a player non-character perspective that I want to advise is for the player to take copious notes of every single session. That way, when you're four or five sessions in, and it starts getting to be that time where the Galliard is, is in front of the Sept and they're, they're saying whatever, um, they have some type of foundation to build those stories on that's pertinent for their pack. You know, the first, you know, two or three sessions, you're going to be finding out their guru or, you know, how they joined the pack or how they all come together to find a totem. You know, these types of uh, creation stories to ha- how you come together. And at a certain point in time, you're going to have to tell the rest of the pack, Sept and the rest of the Karen. That, hey, this is me and my peeps. This is what happened. And if you don't have those notes, you're going to be at a disadvantage and you're going to have to do stuff from memory. And your storyteller is not going to be as uh, understanding as your own notes would be. You're absolutely right. And um, I mean, that's something we, oddly enough, haven't touched down on is that, yeah, the Gallard is the one that's going to be telling this, the Sept about your exploits and, you know, the trials and tribulations of your pack. They're, they're going to be the ones responsible when it comes time for the moot to sing those tales. And that's going to have an effect on that pack. And, and, you know, and I mean, first of all, never lie. No. Is is a Galliard and you're telling these stories. Don't lie. But remember that it is your job to tell the story of your pack. So and, you and can to, probably embellish a yes, little bit. Yes, you can embellish a little. Because obviously, you know, you're bragging about your pack and how awesome your pack are in your great feats of battle. You know, look at all the renown we deserve because of all the awesome shit we did and how cool we are. Right. And the time that Danny bench pressed a tank with his one stupid fucking arm. But <laughs> I can see it. But if but if he level. didn't lift the tank, don't tell that story. Right. Because you don't want to be caught lying in a moot. Number one. Yeah, that's loss of renown, isn't it's, it? It's just going to be a bad idea, jeans. <laughs> that's, that's probably some punishment too. And yeah. <laughs> 
And then not to mention the damage to your reputation. Oh, I think that's probably the worst of everything that's going to happen. Probably in the long term, yeah. Because you can get Reno back, fuck it. Right. But, um, but remember that when you're telling those stories, is it doesn't have to be exact. Just don't lie. It's okay to embellish. The fish was this fucking big. It was eight feet long, man. It was crazy. No, it wasn't. It was like a foot and a half long. But <laughs> you did catch the fish. <laughs> so, okay. Just, just don't call it a shark. It's still a big fish. It, right. Just don't call it a shark. You'll be all right. <laughs> or, or don't give the exact measurements kind of thing. You had to say it was this long. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that will get... You know, telephoned and embellished as that story goes on too. If you do a good enough job, certainly. That's another cool thing too. Is you you have a you have a, a chance, and I hope the storytellers are keeping this in mind because again, the world is a living, breathing place. You know, the world of darkness it should be a living, breathing place. So if the next moot comes about and Danny tells a story of the exploits of the bitches and bruise pack. Or the Blood Moon Pack. That's fine, too. Wrath of the Blood Moon. Yeah, I was shortening it, because that's okay. a lot of words. It's fun, though. Um, okay, of the Bitches and Brews or the Wrath of the Blood Moon. Are you happy now? Yes. Okay. Thank you. That if that story's good enough, that's going to ring out in other steps. Hopefully. You're, you're going to show up in Central Park one day, and Thingy's going to be telling that story on a trash fire. Hopefully. Right? But how cool is that? I mean, that's the thing to keep in mind, both players and storytellers. Like, if you're not doing that shit for your players, you're doing them a disservice. And you're almost punishing, you're, you're not punishing them, but you're certainly not rewarding them for doing an awesome job. We've yet to walk into a sept and hear about our new I, I stuff. think after, you know, obviously we haven't played in a little while now, but like in recent times, you know, probably the end of The Last Chronicle, I'd say that moot. I, I'm imagining some of those stories are going to go. Oh, I wouldn't doubt it. Even passed around. Well, I think that's another thing, too, and, and Grant, let me get your, your thoughts on this. When you are when you haven't been to a moot for a while, you know, your group's been out in the field for an extended period of time, they come back, well, now you have a whole Chronicle's worth of stories. Maybe it's one long arc, huh. maybe it's not, but I think it's important to make the decision of what story you're going to tell and when that starts and when that ends. Absolutely. I mean, and, and, well, the galliard would be responsible for that, and if I was in that position, I would want the story that has the most impact. It has the, the biggest conquest or, you know, the most influence that my pack did. You know, give us the biggest renown boost. Yeah, agreed. No, the one that, the highest impact. And I think that's why I say that when I say this, the most recent one is going to be passed along. Yeah, you know, I'm I, fairly certain on that well, one. As long as you don't fuck it up. That's <laughs> true. But, too, and, but. And here's, here's a neat thing, too, though. And, and I think this is a good point to bring up. I know we're, we're getting about there in time. We're pretty close. We're, okay. We're okay. So I'll keep it quick. But you think about the difference in perspective of a story. Now, let me break this down, right? The things you you you, you guys did in your last this chronicle, you know, they, they found an ancient cairn, they, they beat back a spiral invasion, and we'll leave it there because postmortems exist and we don't want anything for our patrons. Right. You know, the, these are things that they did, they verifiably did, they, they were ranked two when it happened, they had elders, they had people counting on them specifically. But now you go back to their first chronicle where they got thrown in by accident by random happenstance with a forward sept who was there to do a job. Well, when that story happens, it's, it's not the tale of the bitches and bruise and how they, no, 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 no. no. It's the it tale of the, everyone else. And yes. there might've been a little pack that got in their way a couple times. Right. It's the tale of the silent howl in the calm and in Wahia thrice wizened and how they banished the great Bane. Yep. Also, there were other people there. There were, there, there were people there. <laughs> They, there was a small pack. They might have gotten in the way. Right, because because you were no one <laughs> yep. working next to rock stars. <laughs> yeah. No one remembers who opened for the Stones. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I'm trying to think of it because I did You're see never going to remember that. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> You're the only ones who are going to remember or the ones who were there? Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> and it better be a good band opening for the Stones. But no one, no one knows that fucking house band they called in because the band that they wanted was too coked up to go on stage. Okay, fine. Then I rephrase: the ones who remember were the house band that was there playing. There you go. <laughs> because no one's going to give a shit about that story except us because we were there and when it happened. Right, and you can give a unique perspective, but is when it rings out to the nation, it ain't. Yeah, it, it's, it's not about the roadies, it's about Mick. <laughs> <laughs> and that can be a fun thing with, you know, with your storyteller to do, to be like, no, no, you'll make it there someday, but maybe don't tell the story to, because it's not, you're not in any other version but yours. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I like it like that. 
<laughs> again. I didn't even mean it that way. I'm sorry. But <laughs> I mean, everyone's the hero in their own story, but sometimes it's best a way to accumulate actual heroics before you start bragging about what you've done. No, absolutely. And while you're right, everyone is a hero of their own story. Sometimes there are bigger sto- there are bigger heroes next to you while you did your thing. Yeah. And, you know, only one person's going to get top billing. Solid. I think it's just, you know, it's a good way. It's almost like a, it, it's a, both a positive and negative motivating factor. You know, well, we were there too. Well, no, no, one knows who, no one knows who you are. Sure, you were there. So, was it fun while you were there? Sure. Great. But you you got to watch the professionals work. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> you so take all this into consideration. How do you feel about Korax coming in and basically filling the random traveling Galliard's role that they are sort of portrayed as in their brief book? Well, that was kind of their job in the first place. Right. You know, so, so I, I feel pretty good about it. Um, and I, but I think it, it also depends on where they are. Um, obviously, they're going to be far more welcome in a Shadow Lord or get a Fenris dominated sept than they are in, say, Silver Fangland. Where we can't breathe poor people air, and those birds are dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Your facial expression when doing that. <laughs> you might as well had. Did you see cavi- the wrist movement too? The wrist, the wrist movement, movement was perfect. <laughs> you might as well had some like, caviar in your hand. <laughs> Just needed a monocle. <laughs> 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 I think it's, I mean, unless Grant, you got something else. Yeah, so, I mean, th- that's one of those things. That the Galliard Auspice, there is equivalence of that auspice for every single breed out there. All the changing breeds have an equivalent for that particular auspice. Uh, unlike some of the others, you know, Noesha may be an exception because all of them are basically Ragabash. <laughs> so I, I still think that it is the most versatile auspice, and it, it really underlines the fact that it can be used in almost any way as long as they stay true to the concept of what it should be. Well, I, I think you have definitely proven your point. I think we've helped you prove your point through the course of this. Like, I was ready for a fight for the sake of a good argument, but... Nah. No, he, he no you're right. Yeah. He, you win. No, Galliards are all-stars. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, I think they can be intimidating for new players. They can um, be. Because they, they don't have that cool factor that's associated with, like, the Therus, Therus are super complicated, but you get to talk to spirits, you know, so it's got that ooh factor to it. You know, Arun, pretty simple to play, but, you know, they're rock stars. You know, oh, we want to play it. Galliers, they don't have that, that umph to it. They don't have that, that extra it factor that makes players really interested in playing the auspice. So I really have had to work hard for, uh, to play the Galliards. So you really have to convince your players as a storyteller that, hey, this is really cool. And here's why. This is how you can be useful to the pack. This is what you're going to be doing for the most part. But even if you are not doing this, these are all the different options that you have available to your character based on how you want to build your character up. So it's the one auspice that the person can build their character in whatever way they want. And then they can change just a little bit to be able to fit that auspice in there. It's really great. No, you know, I I definitely agree. Uh, I think... uh you know, kind of as a as a, as a final thought here, because I know we, we have to wrap things up, Danny. Yeah, it's pretty close. And I know we got to give you back to your family so you can keep moving. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, uh, you know, I think part of that problem with that that conception is is when people, I think everyone's familiar with Dungeons & Dragons. I mean, if you're going to get into role-playing, you know enough about a fantasy setting that, that I think you guys are often kind of unfairly cast as the bard. Yeah. And while that's, there, there is a, there is an overlay there, but when people hear bard, they think of some asshole jumping around with a flute. <laughs> yeah, that's not super appealing to a lot Let of players. Let me inspire you with a song. Right? You know, like maybe they're dressed like the court jester and they got the mandolin going, eh, everybody. Is no, no, it's they're cool too. It's, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, think, I think maybe that has something to do with it. But, you know, realistically, they're a pretty badass auspice. There's definitely a lot of moving parts and is... Grant, he's tricked us into proving today. There is a... <laughs> Very easily can be a replacement for a missing one. Well, sure. But there's also no end of ways to go about galliarding. Oh, galliarding. <laughs> I knew he was going to sneak it in there again. What? I mean, how else <laughs> do you describe that? He's right. It's the act of being a galliard. It's galliarding. <laughs> All right. Get yeah, right. I'm not... <laughs> Yeah, you just knew you were going to sneak it in there again. <laughs> but uh, here we go again on our own. 
It's uh, it's been a great time. <laughs> And he broke Danny. It's about time for us to go traveling, man. So on behalf of everyone here... Oh, man. <laughs> Scratch and Wolf Studio. Um, we want to say, actually, first of all, thank you so much for joining us again, Grant. Um, I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I hope, hope we can have you back again soon, probably to talk about some Savage Age stuff. Because, hey, in case we forgot to mention it, aside from being a friend of the podcast, uh, a very knowledgeable player and storyteller in his own right, he also helps write for uh, with Weaponized Ink for Where of the Savage Age. So we will definitely be talking about more of that, and hopefully with Grant in tow. Yeah? Anytime. Anytime. Excellent. So yeah, thank you again for joining us. And uh, again, on behalf of us here at Scratch Wolf Studios, we want to say thank you for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you next time. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And we'll see you around. Take it easy. Bye.